Activist, chef, author, and restaurateur Alice Waters is taking a stand for healthy and organic meals throughout the United States. In doing this, she has influenced how children and adults in this country buy, cook, eat, talk, and think about food. Organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised, free-range. These buzzwords we hear all the time now, but where did they come from? Where did they get their roots? Alice Waters was born on April 28, 1944, in Chatham, New Jersey. As a child, Waters almost never went to restaurants. In fact, she says she can remember the only three restaurant experiences of her entire childhood. All she wanted to do on her birthday was go to the Automat in New York, although she doesn't know if you can consider that a real restaurant. When Waters was growing up, popular foods included cubed meatloaf, pickled celery, and no-baked cookie balls. Alice says she never started loving food until she traveled to Paris during her junior year in college through the University of California, Berkeley. Waters shopped at the daily produce markets and went to neighborhood restaurants, where she found their techniques revelatory. Waters had realized that America had really declined in the food industry. She thought something had to be done. I came back and the food in California back in the 60s, just mediocre fast food was emerging, just not tasty. Paris had inspired her so much that she decided to open up a restaurant using locally grown and sourced ingredients, similar to what she had experienced in France. She called it Chez Panisse. In 1971, Chez Panisse opened, creating one of the first major steps of the farm-to-table and organic food movement. In a CNN piece on Alice, reporter Katia Hedder recalls, she just wanted to serve this great food like they did in Paris, but what she did was absolutely revolutionary and lasting and can't be overestimated. Chef Tim Giacomini, a former intern of Waters, remembers the early days. Uh, Chez Panisse did an excellent job promoting organic vendors through their menu on a daily basis. With that, basically what, what that, that means is describing where the product came from. That is, if we were using Sonoma duck breast, they actually put that in the, in the menu. Some of the seasonal herbs or some of the, the produce that was actually uh, grown on, on property. The restaurant has been a huge success. For the last 40 years, it has been ranked one of the best in the entire world. This is a very tough business, and to sustain greatness for as long as she has is just a testament to how good she is and the quality of people that she surrounds herself with, and also what she does on a daily basis to make sure every ingredient, every patron that comes to the restaurant is taken care of and educated, not only to eat properly, but experiences something different. Finding these foods at the time wasn't an easy process. Water said they literally had to forage to find the foods. I went to town to try to find ducks that were not in packages. We went to farm stands, drove down to Palo Alto and Big Sur and pick up the live trout. Eventually, they found themselves on the doorsteps of organic farmers, ranchers, and dairymen. But not everyone agreed with this new way of eating. In fact, for most people, it was very hard because fast food is much less expensive and easier to find. People said her goal was unrealistic in our current economic climate or that she was truly out of her mind. Fast food was a multi-billion dollar industry she was standing up against. They were using mass production of animals. Cows and chickens were crammed together and living in their own filth. They were fed unhealthy diets just to fatten them up for slaughter. In these conditions, the animals required large amounts of antibiotics just to stay alive. It is nasty in here, uh, there's dust flying everywhere, there's feces everywhere. Not only were the meats coming out of these big food farms unhealthy, but even the vegetables were being sprayed with toxic pesticides. Even today, she's still standing up against people who say she isn't a thinker, she's a utopian. A relentless radical who just doesn't care whether the current checks and balances of real life can accommodate her ideas. I believe that most people that have inspirational ideas are frequently thought as um, either crazy or outrageous, but I think over time, as those ideas progress, they seem to be more and more attainable. But she didn't let her critics stop her. She knew it would take more than just a restaurant to change the way people eat. 
Every day driving to work, Waters had noticed an old, gloomy school, Martin Luther King Jr. School in Berkeley. She wondered how the children could possibly thrive in such an environment and what message it sent out about our culture's priorities. She said she even noticed how it was a run-down collection of sad old concrete buildings with peeling paint and broken blacktop playground. One day, she finally went in and spoke with the principal, Neil Smith. She wanted to make the school a happier environment for the children and even create a garden. Soon after, Alice Waters became even more upset when she learned that the children were eating bags of mass-produced corn chips and ate a kind of beef and tomato slurry from a can. She said, For the first time, I woke up to what was happening in public education and I learned how badly things had fallen apart. Waters is very passionate about teaching. When she was 22 years old, she trained in the discipline of Montessori education in England. She quotes that Maria Montessori's philosophy has remained vital to her all her life. Children learn best through experiences. The senses are the pathways to our minds, and when a child's senses are activated, knowledge floods in. After several months, Principal Smith got back to her and said the school was only ready for a simple organic garden. To raise money, they asked friends for support and had fundraisers at the school. When they finally raised enough money, they started working right away. The teachers, the students, and Alice Waters. They dug up flower beds and they grew fruit trees and vegetables. And in 1996, the Edible Schoolyard was founded. The Edible Schoolyard provides the students with a one acre organic garden and fun experiences in the kitchen and outdoors. It also provides the children with a better understanding of how the natural world sustains the food that they eat. When I was a teacher uh, there, the kids would just become uh, either thrilled that they were going to gardening and cooking class or just devastated if they couldn't go for some reason or if they had to do something else. And so that, that was my first inkling that there's something special to the work that Alice Waters is doing. Since that first small step at a local school, there have been thousands more edible schoolyards created and constructed around the world. The mission of the Edible Schoolyard Project is to build and share an edible education curriculum for kindergarten through high school. They envision gardens and kitchen as interactive classrooms for all academic subjects and a free nutritious organic lunch for every student. They feel that integrating this curriculum into schools can transform the health and values of every child in America. Today, Waters continues to be an activist and author, educating people about organic food around the globe. She has even spoken to presidents, spreading her message that good food should be a right and not a privilege. Today, 15 to 20% of our fruits and vegetables in North America are grown organically. So I think over time that's gonna to continue to increase the percentages. For example, for the past 20 years, we've seen up to 20% growth year over year on organics. Across North America, you're gonna to continue to see a higher percentage of organics. Whether we can get to 100%, we'll see. But I think that she's got great vision. And there's a lot of proponents to the idea that she's crazy, is that you can't grow enough if you don't have pesticides. Well. I would argue that we're wasting enough food that if we were growing 100% organically and we reduced our food waste, there would be plenty of food for everyone. Waters has clearly been successful in her own career, receiving numerous awards, including being the first woman named Best Chef in America in 1992. And in 2015, she was honored with the National Humanities Award from President Obama. But has Alice Waters been successful in her quest to bring organic food to the masses and educate the next generation? Well, Tonya Antle, co-founder of the Organic Food Network, started at Earthbound Farms in 2001. They had sales of $60 million. When she retired, nine years later, they were just shy of half a billion dollars. Not only has her stand educated our society on the importance of quality food, but it has led to an entire industry that has already created hundreds of thousands of jobs. So, has she succeeded? Quite fortunately, for the health of the planet and all human beings, it has been a job well done.